And this thing, I swear it's recording this time. I'm trying out a new microphone today. And this is my second interview with it. And the first interview shall be lost to history because I wasn't recording it. <laughs> wow. But this would have picked up something though, right? Yes, it's just not going to sound as good. Okay. So, what's your podcast called? Well, he came up with the name. Wait. And yeah. Oh, yeah. He came up with the name. And uh, that's The Geek Voice, yeah. right? The Geek Voice. The, the Geek Voice. The Geek. Okay. So, The Geek Voice. Now, this is a super awesome nerdity podcast coming out of India. How many episodes have you released so far, Part? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the problem here? The problem is, you know, what you see on my right? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no. No, it's the no, schedules no. that really, really sync up. And we say that, okay, no, today we are going to do it. But uh, Path gets up really late. Yeah. And, I, you know, by the time he wakes up and by the time I get, uh, he gets ready, I'm already out in a cafe somewhere. And that's noisy, so it doesn't work out for us. So, yeah, yeah. Um, we just need to get together and find a good time to kick it off. Maybe today, I don't know. So, welcome to episode <laughs> one of The Geek Voice. Woo-hoo! I've been explaining to Part in the last... Uh, in the last week, as we've been at DrupalCon Mumbai, that one of the great secrets, big secrets, <laughs> of open source and doing this is just ship it. <laughs> yes. People are not people are not here for the ultra high quality, for Hussein's great beauty, <laughs> right? It's not about production value. They want to know what the smart people in the community are doing or how someone's applying, you know, these ideas that we have floating around. So mm-hmm. this time, right? on The Geek Voice. We're doing a special co-hosted episode with the Acquia podcast, and I'm going to release it in a couple of weeks, and you have to come with me, because otherwise, you can't cross-link to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That that came up. Yeah, okay. All right. We'll do that. You have to do that now. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing, we could have our conversation now. I'll send you a cut that you can have, and then you can actually do a follow-up conversation between the two of you, mm-hmm. stick it on the end, and put it out in the world. Whoa. Just this do is it. awesome. Yeah. Just do it. Just yeah, do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can represent Nike from now on. Not <laughs> sponsored by Nike. Just saying. Right? And then you do one a month and, and it's, it's that easy. Yes. Problem solved. So, oh, yeah. thanks for talking with me today. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast. Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. That so, is I do this little thing called the Acquia Podcast that I, I really, really enjoy, and I get to meet lots of people from our community, people um, from other open source communities, people applying our ideas in business. It's really, really great. That's the Acquia podcast. We're at the Contributor Sprint Day at DrupalCon Asia, which is happening in Mumbai this year. Yeah. It's been a tremendous con for me. It's been the best con for me in, in years. I mean, there's such a, a spirit. There's so much excitement going on yes. here. Can you, can you talk about what's going on in, in Drupal and open source in India a little bit? Sure. And, and uh, from what you said about excitement, definitely we have been waiting for this con for years, you know, actually years. And we are so happy it's finally here. And, um, <coughs> well, in India, uh, well, a lot of good, great things are happening in Drupal since uh, forever, I think. You know, I mean, we had our first meetup in 2005 in Ahmedabad. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Ooh. the first camp happened uh, around 2009, though. But yes, meetup, yes. Yeah. And in Bangalore, we have been having regular meetups, uh, camp, we, we had a great camp last year. And uh, I know, you know, uh, Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, they have been having camps since uh, 2011. So in a lot of Europe and uh, places in America, a great camp has 80 people, 200 people, 300 people, right? <laughs> there aren't very many that are above 350, let's say bad camp, uh, the nice camp in New York City, London, 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 600, 700 people. What's a normal average 
size of a camp in India? 500 plus. Otherwise, it's not called a camp. Yeah, it's not know, a it's camp. It's a big meetup. We yeah. had a mini camp. <laughs> we had a mini camp and we saw about, what, uh, 100 people? Yeah. We had about 100 registrations and uh, I don't remember how many turned up, but yeah. I think, I think about 80. I it, okay. I oh, think, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what Tani told me. I'm completely lost here. 80, 80 is a really nice size though. Uh, one of the reasons why I love going to camps. I, I, DrupalCon is very important and I obviously, I, I like it. But for me, so much more of the grassroots stuff happens at the camps now. And when you spend two or three days with 80 people, um, you get the chance to talk with so many more people directly and, you know, on a personal level and really spend time with people you want to talk to. And especially, um, well, at DrupalCons where, you know, a thousand, three thousand, four thousand people come, it's like, hi, 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 great to see you. How's your project going? Great to see you. Hi, 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 hi. And that's already and done, then, right? And, and certainly at the American cons, there are times when I, don't even, I haven't even said hi to all the people <laughs> I know yet. And then it's so, it's, it's a very valuable gathering in some ways, but not really for maintaining maintaining this yeah. network that we need. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we pay a lot of attention to meetups. We keep it, uh, you know, we, we, we treat it as a very important thing. We have it monthly, at least we try to. And a lot of companies sponsor it out. And about the mini camp, yeah, you're completely right, definitely. Uh, we uh, The last mini camp we had, uh, like I said, around 80 people turned up. Uh, there's this person who turned up and uh, ever, since then he has been a regular contributor to all the events. In fact, he has pulled together the community like we have not been able to in a you know, few years. He has created WhatsApp groups and, you know, he's pulled in people from different companies and, you know, like asking them to follow up. And, you know, so it's like a WhatsApp group is like uh, around 200 people now. So we, we were on a we were in a panel discussion yesterday about the transformation of Indian IT and, and open source and what have you. And one thing that came up that I think this is this is relevant to is the bring let everyone in, bring everyone in, let everyone come and see what's going on because you never know what skill is someone someone's going to have. They could be a great coder, right? But there's we, we need so much more than that. Yeah, I mean, um, well, if you if you ask me. Um, I am not a coder myself, uh, and I've been part of the Drupal community since three years now, and I haven't written a single line of code. But um, So I think we should have, as, as we were talking yesterday, I mean, you guys were, so there's a good balance of uh, people that we should have, coders, non-coders, and uh, I think the conclusion was that it'll automatically balance itself. Yeah. I mean, the demand and supply, you know, will automatically balance it out. So yes, as many people as we can gather in the community is always good. So you both work for a company called Accelerant, which is fully remote. You are still India's number one contributor to Drupal 8, is that right? That's, that's right. Co so, that's so code contributor. Code con yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for that. Now, your contributions are completely different. You're a community manager at Accelerant. Yes. What does that involve? What do you do? So I help um, support uh, local communities, do their camps, uh, meetups. Um, so I help them get the word out, uh, you know, entertain them while they're there. Something like a mini jam, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I support the community to organize events, basically. And um, I, I've been um, organizing camps since three years. And I think under my belt, I have Triple Camp Delhi two years in a row. Uh, Mumbai last year. Then uh, Triple Camp Hyderabad, Triple Camp Bangalore, Triple Camp Pune. So the first Drupal camps, two all Drupal camps. camps, yes. So I've done all the camps. I've been on the core committee of all the camps. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. Now tell me, um, Accelerant hired you to do this and pays you to do this. What are your what are your goals? What 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 do you have to tell your manager that you've succeeded? And and what sort of business value does Accelerant get from having uh, a community organizer on on staff? Um, this is not more of a business uh, move for us, yeah. uh, to be very honest. Uh, it's more of a branding effort and, you know, elevating the community from ground up. I mean, we've been sponsoring each and every single camp since 2013, from what I know. So I did a podcast very recently with Ambrosia Vertesi, who is the head of global talent at Hootsuite. Mm -hmm. And she will tell you, as an HR person... Her mission is to find great people to work for her company. She'll tell you that branding is, is mission critical to business. So actually, you, you are having an effect on the bottom line in terms of hiring people, retention. Um, also, we have to uh, 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 
support this community that produces the majority of the code that then we get to help other people with too. Yeah, so basically my uh, effort also goes into, um, you know, spreading our culture, you know, throwing uh, the right image for Accelerant uh, to our prospect employees, if you will. And uh, um, my... I think my company likes me and they, they trust me with what I'm doing. So they're like, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, whatever you do, we're fine with it. Um, and as long as I'm reaching out to as many people as I can, uh, they're happy. And uh, another thing is, you know, as far as code contributions are concerned, he organizes monthly sprints in Accelerant. Yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm responsible for yeah, doing monthly sprints as well. Yeah, and uh, I mean, from the code contributions part of the thing, you know, so I've held many roles at Accelerant, you know, we are very dynamic that way, we keep uh, switching. So in middle, I held a role called full-time core contributor. And, uh, you know, when I started out with that, it was a new role for the company as well, you know, for the organization as well. And uh, when I started out, I was trying to figure out the same thing, what you're just asking, you know, like, what, what uh, you know, like, what is the company looking out, out of, you know, out of, out of this? And uh, when I had this discussion, they said, no, just jump into it. You know, yeah. we'll see. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> just jump into it. You know, there is no concrete objectives defined yet. But we'll, we'll work upon it in the, on the way. But we don't care about numbers. We don't care about commit mentions or issue credits or anything. You know, just go there. But we need Drupal 8 out. So please go help those people. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, enough Acquia podcast for now. I'm going to hand the microphone over to the Geek Voice. And, um, you know, as they say on Reddit, ask me anything. Oh. All right. Sweet. Um, so, all right. Um, do you want to kick it off? Oh, you want to you wanna hold the mic? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hussain. Hey, uh, welcome to Geek Voice first episode. First. Episode what? zero. Yeah. Ep- this is Geek Voice after all. Yeah. Episode zero. zero. Episode zero. So, um, let me take over. And, uh, oh, yeah. I'm, all right. <laughs> All right, so let me take over, and uh, I'm gonna be asking Jam, who's the uh, who's evangelist, the now evangelist developer relations Aquia. All right, uh, he's recently switched roles, I guess, but earlier he was. Uh, I was community affairs manager. All right, and then uh, we had an interim thing called open source evangelist, mm-hmm. but uh, as we figure out our part in contributing to Drupal, I mean, beyond paying full-time core contributors and what have you, right now, um, it, uh, it was a very natural progression for me. Um, I, I, I have a strong affinity with our community. So it's, anyway, it seemed like a real natural alignment for me to, to be doing a job to help developers uh, in their day-to-day life. If I can connect you with a bit of information that's important or introduce you to a no, new idea or um, show you that, that, that your work as a developer makes a difference out in the world or changes how people are thinking that's that's what i'm focusing on now and it's 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 great it's great so far it's a it's new it's only, i've only been doing it technically for about six or seven weeks but it's it's very very similar to what i was doing before anyway so it's a pretty happy place for me all right that's uh, that's sweet um i mean the way you've the, the way you've been weaved into the community um you're like a role model if you will yeah yeah and uh, so this is something that was new to me when I came in. Uh, and the first thing that Ankur told me was, hey, look at what Jam does. And uh, we should do something similar and uh, be awesome. And yeah, uh, and that's why I am the community manager at Excel. And I'm so awesome because I'm following his footsteps. Wow. I'm really not sure what to say now, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. So much kisses. Right now. <laughs> Kisas. Kisas is Kisas. a Hindi word that means flattery. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. I'll hand over the mic to Hussain to ask a few more questions about. Okay. So, uh, when you say evangelist and developer relations, uh, so can, can you give us an instance which was very developer centric, something which you set up recently? Um, we're doing a couple things that have tied together nicely recently. We've got a series called the Drupal 8 module of the week. And, you know, it's it can, the contribs, now that Drupal 8 is out, the contrib space is behind. That's not a bad thing. It's normal for our releases. But 
you know, Drupal 8 is much more ready to use than any previous release of Drupal so early. And we wanted to highlight the fact that people can really jump in and go. And we wanted to instill confidence in the platform by showing all these models, modules are actually ready. Right, so right now, every week, um, uh, with a colleague of mine, we're publishing uh, uh, articles about meta tag, about big pipe, about things that are ready to go, and and making your sites better for your clients. And so we'll say, you know, who 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 wrote it? Why did they do it? What was the situation? What it solves? How it benefits a client? How it benef benefits a, devel a developer? And I love that. And one of the ones we did recently, which was big pipe, which is amazing. And we happened to do a webinar with Wim. Uh, who is uh, Wim Lears, who's one of the maintainers of that at the same time. So I was able to put together a package of information, the two webinars and the, the little interview with him, all talking about Big Pipe. And then everybody should now know that this is out there and available. You just install it and you go. So um, that, that's, a, that's, a simple, that's a simple example. Okay, that, that, that sounds cool. Uh, so how does anyone reach you if, if they want to, you know, if they're working on a module and if they want to put it on the module of the week, how does anyone reach you? So that's pretty easy. Um, I'm quite easy to find online. If you go to at Horn Cologne on Twitter, uh, it's probably the simplest way to, to find me and, and, and get in touch with me. Uh, my email is jam at aquia.com. Just, just go ahead and write me. I've got a nice pipeline of articles coming. I went to a session here in Mumbai by uh, Josef Dabanik about the state of contrib, and he talked about different areas of, you know, if it's layout, if it's queries, if it's um, front and back end, different areas of modules. And he was rating modules that are out like in terms of completeness and usability. And so um, I'm getting his slides today. And I think the next few articles, uh, I'm going to pick from the top of each of his lists and, and, and try and write an article about those. Some people have been in touch with me. And right now we're only doing one a week, but um, more and more people are, 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 are showing me things. So um, I don't know if it'll be two a week or if we'll make a different format. But right now, it's going pretty well. It's not the only project I do. I'm really, really interested in highlighting people who are succeeding with the technology of Drupal. So if you have a great case study, if you have a great project, if you have something that you'd really like to show off, um, if I can, I'd love to do something about it. Maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's an article. Um, or if it doesn't fit in any of my formats, um, I would also be really happy to connect you with maybe someone else who could, right, on, on another platform or whatever. But um, I'm really, really interested in making developers' lives better by connecting them with, with good information. Yes, and and personally, I can I can vouch that you know you always respond on Twitter, <laughs> and so yeah, that's the easiest place to, uh, to reach you. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, they um, at Acquia you have uh, a program where you come up with funds for uh, porting modules for D eight. Can you tell us more about that? So. I w I've been with Acquia a, a very long time. I was the 18th employee, and and one of the reasons why it's been so great is I come out of the Drupal trenches. Drupal's my project. It's my, you know, open source love. And right from the beginning, Acquia has made incredible contributions. Um, we've, screwed thing we've screwed up. We've made mistakes. We've upset people. Um, I've seen us really try and make it right, really apologize, whatever. But in terms of how much we try to give to the platform, I'm just so proud to be at a place where they send a guy around the world talking about open source to a place where there are 12 core contributors and so on. And it completely, it, uh, uh, son, knowing all of that, a couple months ago when I heard that we were going to put a half a million dollars straight into Drupal 8 module upgrades, I was pretty blown away. And so um, what we've done at Acquia, um, uh, the guy who's organizing the program is called John Kennedy. He is also the product owner for our Drupal distribution, which is called Lightning, which is really cool. Check out Lightning. It's like a base platform for building enterprise Drupal sites with a lot of opinionated architectural choices so that you can get commonality across big sites and you know make smart choices about workflows and so on. Because we need to get Lightning into Drupal 8, we realized, oh, hey, we got to get more modules moving faster so we can use it too. Um, and this principle of enlightened self-interest is very important in open source. Um, and we made, a, we made a calculation along the way. This is pretty simple. If we invest this much money, we're going to get huge returns out of it. And so will the community. So the idea is John has been in touch with a lot of different people, a lot of maintainers, a lot of project owners in the Drupal community and all the stuff that um, we considered important for Lightning and a few other things. Uh, 
The maintainers have all agreed to work at a community rate, so it's not a, a commercial level. It's not like what you'd get for a, on a big client project, but you know, real money, good money that you can live on. Mm -hmm. We're paying that rate, and and so they give us an estimate of the hours, what they need to to port a module to Drupal eight, and. We've been pushing that on. It's really, really great. And I've talked with a couple of the maintainers who've been doing it. And it's just, I don't know, this is a really feel-good moment. Um, and I think it's one of the best investments that we've made in a long time. I'm really, really pr proud that we can do something like that. It's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and it it yeah. wasn't me, but you're welcome. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think we'll put uh, a little bit of detail about that uh, in the description below. Um, I don't know if this is where the line is. Somewhere, somewhere it would be. Yes, <laughs> right over our faces. <laughs> but yeah, um, so thank you for that. Yes. Um, next, um, tell me more about how you got engaged with Acquia. How many years ago again? Um, I started with Acquia in August 2008. Um, the short version is that I had been doing Drupal consulting and my first Drupal event was DrupalCon Brussels in 2006. And there were 200 of us there and registration you walked in the door and you had to Dries 20 euros <laughs> and you got a t-shirt and you were in um, so I had met Dries then and before I was working in Drupal um, apart from being a professional musician I worked as a translator and a writer and he engaged me to write all of the texts and the legal disclaimers and the API documentation for Mollum when he came when, when he that was his other startup um when he brought out Acquia. And uh, so I did all of the texts from Malam. We had worked together a little bit um, and because we knew each other sort of secondhand through the community. And at some point, Acquia needed a, the position was called senior writer. And I knew Drupal and I had been doing professional writing for 10 years, basically. And, and it seemed like a really good fit. And I wanted to move on from my situation. And so this little startup sounded like a good idea. And um, <laughs> hmm, well, I was the 18th employee. This was a this was a small company. Yeah. I mean, and you have to imagine that the first version, we everybody did everything. I worked on Acqui.com, um, and and I was the most junior person in engineering. I documented the Drupal Gardens when we built it. I documented our first ho hosting platform. I did testing, bug reports, all that stuff. Whoa. And over time, I transitioned. 2011, I transitioned into the marketing department um, because. I was getting better known in the community and um, I was given a, a very, very nice budget to go and help the community and I sponsored, in 2012, I sponsored 84 Drupal camps. I don't think any single person has sponsored that many. Now, it wasn't my money, but I think it's also money well spent um, and, you know, did a lot of community investment in that, through that and then um, as time's gone on, this has transitioned into this evangelist job and it's, I mean, um, it's, it's been a good ride. Awesome. <laughs> Just saying, I don't know if you've, I think this is the first time you're telling this on a... I've never heard of it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this is a first right here at The Geek Voice. The yeah, Geek Voice, episode zero. Yeah. Episode zero. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, I think I wanted to ask you one more thing. Um, so you've always told me in our conversation since the past week, you know, you do this because you you want to be true to the heart and you don't want to do anything that you don't stand behind. Um, can you tell us more about that ideology that you have when you work in the community? Yes. I'm going to try and tell you a really short version. Um, in the last 10 years, I've been forced to grow up. I've had to become an adult. I mean, I have children and, and um, friends and relatives have died and I've had to deal with that and you know people my own age have gotten sick and it's all you know it's real life and it, it can be really hard and as I've gone through some of these hard times right in like I said in the last I've been doing this is wow I've been doing Drupal for 11 years so in, in this in the same time frame as I had to face up to facts and become an adult um, I got involved in Drupal and involved in open source and this, this, I, the, the changes in me, um, inside me, they feel completely tied to the open source values, right? Uh, transparency, honesty, sharing, paying it forward, paying it back, all that stuff that we practice. We don't just say it would be nice to do that. We live that in our communities. And because these things were happening at the same time, for me somehow, it's just one. And, and when you see me doing stuff, when you hear me doing stuff, it's actually really me 
This is not, I'm not putting on a show or something. So it would be really, really hard for me to take a job that wasn't helping people. I think I think I can imagine being in other jobs, right? Other companies, it, it happens. But I think if you make something that makes people's lives better, doesn't even have to be developers, right? But it has to be something that I can believe in or I would really have trouble doing it. So, you know, expressing that in what we do today, I mean, I, I, tr I deeply admire our community and our technology and that's what, I'm, that's what I've been doing for a long time. But, I, you know, it could apply elsewhere too. But that's, I guess that's the shortest version of that. But that's really, really inspirational. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I was super inspired by that. And that's why I'm like, you have to mention that on the podcast. I and you heard it first here? <laughs> first. We do a lot of firsts. <laughs> and we're going to do a lot of firsts in our coming episodes. So you better follow. So where can we find The Geek Voice online? Um, the Geek Voice should be available on YouTube and on Accelerant website blogs. So we're going to do a quick up upload on the YouTube and the same thing you can have uh, on our blogs as well. And probably a gist of it, a summary of it as a blog at the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do now technically is we're going we're gonna to wrap up now. We'll cut this audio together. I'll give you one copy. I'll give me one copy, right? And when you're ready to release, which has to be soon, <laughs> we'll release these roughly at the same time and then we'll link, link, link to each other. Yes. Um, sure. Thank you so much. It was a real privilege to be on your podcast. <laughs> I, um, I really enjoyed that. And, and you, you, know, you brought out stuff that I wouldn't just bring up on a normal basis. So you know, thank you for taking the time to have me on your podcast. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, how's your DrupalCon been? Amazing. Really, really. I mean, like, got to meet so many people. And usually you meet a lot of good, great people. But, you know, I'm doing that this time in my own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so this was like uh, hosting a big party at home for me. <laughs> I've been meeting with people, inviting them to parties and stuff. It was tiring. Yes, it's always tiring, by the way, um, for organizers and, you know, team members. Freaking fun. So much fun. So I've really had a good time. And if anyone can find a good excuse for me to be back in India, be in touch. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jam. Thank you so much. Huh. Drupal Camp Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Drupal India. Come on. <laughs>